Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today is going to be a bit different as you might have seen from the title because right here in my hands I have the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X processor with 64 core count and 128 threads. No wonder it's called Threadripper. But okay, never the, nevertheless, we have here something else. We have the Asus ROG Strix TRX40E gaming motherboard which is indeed capable of handling this processor. Now this is kind of goes in a bucket with the mainstream processors but not likely in the mainstream like 8 core 16 thread uh, gaming processor. This is something that basically doesn't go into servers but it should, definitely should and you'll see why when we talk about the results. Now AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X is basically in a category of, of its own, uh, gives you the possibility to save time while uh, working on some uh, high budget projects, rendering, game development, multicam or high budget video editing, which also gives you the ability to push the workflow uh, to a shorter time period. Now comparing the 3990X and 3970X you can see the difference in core count and the threads it's basically double uh, lower on 3970X. Also the base clock is higher on 3970X but the boost clock goes up to uh, 0.6 gigahertz uh, up on the 3990X. The TDP on both is 280 watts and then we come to the price where you can see that 3990X is double the price of 3970X. Now when we're talking about Cinebench R20, AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X scores almost at 24,000 points. When we have the Intel Xeon Platinum 8168 with 24 cores and 48 threads, it gets 16,500 points. This wouldn't be strange when we go with the core count and everything if the price of the Intel wasn't almost $6,000. And then we have also the uh, Xeon E74890 V2 with 15 cores and 30 threads, almost 30,000 points with even higher price $6,600. Now at the bottom you have also the uh, Threadripper of first generation, you have the Ryzen 7 uh, 1700X and some Intel Xeon processors with lower core count. Uh, on the official V-Ray Next benchmarks I got a score of 71,500 K samples while others got 93 to 100,000 points. Now unfortunately on that website it doesn't say if they overclocked the Threadripper or something else but these are the scores. Now when we take in comparison to the Epic 774264-core uh, server processor it gets uh, almost 85,000 points and then we go to uh, something really funny which is Intel Xeon Platinum 8280M scoring 73,000 points with 28 core count and the price tag of $10,000. Now I wanted to use Cinebench R15 just because I tested there some uh, standard consumer processors which are like uh, i9-9900KF, uh, Ryzen 5 3600s and uh, Core i7-8700K. As you can see in Cinebench R15 and even in Air R20 uh, the picture loads extremely quick and it's just magnificent to see such power in the processor. But then when you take a look at the scores you get the understanding why the 3990X is so uh, above them. Of course if we multiply the cores on the consumer uh, processors then I don't think if we could achieve these kind of temperatures or anything similar to that since the Threadripper was running around 60 Celsius degrees to 65 on Fractal Design Celsius S36. CPU Z benchmark with multi core thread count, uh, comparing it to uh, i9 7980XE, uh, Threadripper first generation 1950X, a Ryzen 7 3700X, and Intel Core i9 9900KF. These are the benchmarks with multi core count, and of course, this makes sense since it has 64 cores. Unfortunately, I don't have more processors this kind of type, so I don't have uh, Threadripper 3970X, 3960X uh, or 
new Intel Core 10 generation X uh, which I could use for benchmarking and comparing the price of course the price tag and cores and the results in all these tests but I had to go through different benchmark and tests online to get a glimpse of what is happening here just to see what they did with this processor to basically demolish all the other competition. For this kind of processor you do need a special motherboard, special socket, uh, if you didn't notice I mean the size is just as my palm so it kind of does make sense, it won't go into standard socket. Now the socket for the Threadripper is STRX40 and we have the board right here. So as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, uh, this is the Asus ROG Strix TRX 40E gaming motherboard which supports AMD Ryzen Threadripper uh, processors. Now when it comes to some, uh, let's say, specifications of the motherboard, you do have loads of connectivity. On the back I.O. panel, so you have BIOS flashback button, you have 2x2 Wi-Fi module, anti-surge 2.5G LAN port, you have the anti-surge LAN port standard, you have 8 USB 3.2 generation 2, which of those 8, 7 are type A uh, and 1 is type C, you have 4 USB 2.0 ports and you have 1 optical SPDIF out and 5 audio jacks. When it comes to USB connectivity, USB 3.2 generation 2 on the front panel connector, 8 USB 3.2 generation 2 ports, 4 USB 3.2 generation 1 ports, 4 USB 2.0 ports. I mean, that's a lot of USB ports, without a doubt. Uh, taking into consideration the form factor, it's ATX, so the motherboard supports AMD sockets STRX4 for third generation AMD Ryzen. Threadripper desktop processors. The chipset is AMD TRX40 uh, and when it comes to memory it supports 8 DIMMs, maximum 256 gigabytes, DDR4 4400 plus OC, ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory. Expansion slots are 3 times PCI Express 4.0 times 16 and it supports all PCI Express slots on times 16 mode. Also it has one PCI Express 4.0 times 4. Uh, when we're talking about multi-GPU, NVIDIA uh, two-way SLI and the AMD two-way Crossfire X. Uh, talking about storage on this motherboard you have two M.2 socket 3 with M key which are PCI Express 4.0 times 4 and you have one M.2 socket 3 with M key which supports both SATA and PCI Express 4.0 times 4. Uh, additional to that you get uh, 8 SATA ports 6 gigabits per second. So yeah altogether you have loads of connectivity and I do have to say it also has an RGB connector so everything is here as as a standard motherboard right but okay nevertheless what are the aims for this kind of processor why, why does it need all of this? So when we're talking about the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X we have rendering is definitely one of the used cases if you're working on some uh, high budget projects so rendering, game development, uh, multicam or high budget video editing so this is actually what this processor is made for uh, of course uh, maybe if you're not into those high budget projects and you still want to get some extreme stuff you can go with 3970X or 3960X which would be definitely more affordable as I mentioned at the beginning of the video 3970X is twice as cheaper than the 3990X and the core count is a bit different but the results are very interesting. Uh, guys, this is it. I mean, for the motherboard and for the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3990X, I will give my PC Crazy Premium and Performance badge just because you've seen the results and what they do and what it can do. Uh, there's always that what if Intel makes a 64 core processor with, they won't, not that. Uh, quickly just because their architecture is way behind AMD's so we don't have to talk about that and we don't have to guess what will happen if it would happen so guys PC crazy performance and premium badge for the processor and for the motherboard uh, thank you for watching I know this is a bit of a different video than I usually do when it comes to 
gaming uh, video products that are made for gaming and similar stuff but this is something when it comes to workflow performance and definitely some premium stuff so guys if you like the video don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you didn't subscribe for future videos subscribe now and see you in another one bye bye